everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about conflict management. I'm going to start with an exercise. This is what we do in class. Here's a question for you. It is okay to use your lab mates reagents. So in class, I have students either stand on this side or this side, depending on where they want, if, if they agree or not. So here are the no's and here are the yeses. And then I have the yes group talk to the no group on why they're standing over there and vice versa. And usually there's a debate that goes on and people are talking about why they're standing where they're standing. I illustrate this because where you're standing, the physical space, uh, symbolizes your position or where you are. But why you're standing there symbolizes your interest. So your interest motivates your position. So here's another one. It is okay to ask for a recommendation letter one week before it's due. So the no stand over here, the yes is stand over there, and again, they talk about their interests. Okay. So in this exercise is to show the difference between a position and the interest. So the yes or no are your positions, and the why behind them are your interests. So understanding the difference between interests and positions is a cornerstone of collaborative negotiation success. So I'll give you some more examples. The position is someone says, um, start a month early. Well, why are they saying that? It's because they want the project to be finished on time. The position may be demand. I demand you to do this. These are my demands. But what are the interests behind those demands are the concerns. They have concerns about something. Position, what I won't do, I'm not doing that. It's because there are some fears. There's some, the interest is the fears behind that. So the positions is what people say they want, and it's the interest is what people say why they want it. So a negotiator is less to convince. You're not there to convince the other person to change their position. You're there to convince to find solutions that addresses both parties' interests. So in class, what we go through are some um, case studies. And sometimes it's about uh, we, we reenact some skits with supervisor and students, uh, maybe student and student. But one of the classic skits we run is um, a skit about a student that is afraid to tell the supervisor that they're going for a non-academic position and the supervisor is all about publishing and getting into that academic position. And we act those things out. And we talked about the positions and interests of the supervisor and how they can negotiate that. So illustrate with a real example. Here is the professor. The position is, no, you cannot TA. The student says, I want to TA. I want to be a teaching assistant. Now, what is the concern or what is the interest of the professor? The professor is saying, I'm afraid that you're going to take time away from the lab and that's going to decrease productivity. The student's interest is, I would like some teaching experience because I hope to go into teaching stream one day. So it's the negotiation is coming up with a solution so that both parties' interests are met. Okay. So talking about the concerns of the professor, how can the student come up with something that works for both of them? Well, the student can talk about this course that I'm TAing, it is about 12 hours each semester and I can make up those 12 hours at certain dates. So if you can say, if a student can say, the class is every Tuesday at this time to this time, then I can stay either later on Tuesday or come in on a Saturday, whatever that student feels is most appropriate, then the professor doesn't feel as if they're gonna be taken away from their productivity, okay? And then at the same time, the student's interest is also met as well. So that's just one example of the case studies that we talk about. For more information, you can go to the Grad CRC, the Grad Conflict Resolution Center, and they have tons of tips and advice. 
And if you have any problems with grad school or your lab environment or anything in general, and if you want to go for confidential advice on how to proceed, I highly recommend it's for all graduate students and they have seen problems galore. I would say they, they know how to address any issue. Now they're not going to go in and solve the problem for you, but they will give you tips on how you can go through the process of conflict management.